Hey, Steve and Alex, my name is Wild Ones, and welcome back to Minecraft. It has been a long time since I uploaded a video on this channel. Today, I'm going to start a brand new series, and a new world as well. And uh, I wanted to invite you along for the ride. Uh, now, we'll be starting this world in Minecraft 1.16.4, the current version. Uh, the Caves and Cliffs update uh, is still probably six months away, uh, so I plan on keeping my world exploration to a pretty minimal amount, at least to start with. Uh, as uh, we get closer to the 1.17 update, uh, I may uh, start loading up some of the uh, snapshots just to uh, play with that and kind of get it going, but I want to make sure that we're in pretty stable versions before I do anything of that nature. Um, and uh, so keeping my exploration to a minimum at this point uh, is just so that once uh, that update does come out, uh, we'll be able to take full advantage of the, uh, of the update and, uh, you know, see what the new update has to offer for us. Um, now, for those of you who may have seen my previous videos, uh, I'm, I plan on making this series the way I had initially intended the Life in Blocks series to go, my very first series. I had intended that to be uh, more theme and, and uh, message uh, centered. I uh, didn't wind up doing that, and uh, so this uh, this time around, um, the, the episodes that I put out or the videos that I put out will uh, pretty much be centered around some theme and or purpose that I want to convey uh, a message about. Um, try not to be, I'm not a political person, I'm not, you know, but... You know, I do have things that I want to talk about and, and uh, find a way to help explain uh, in some ways. So just be aware of that. That is my intention. Um, now, uh, with that in mind, let's go ahead and uh, get the uh, new world created here. Uh, I'm uh, going to create the new world. Uh, I've decided to call the world the library. And uh, that's what I will be, um, that's what I'll be using as the world seed as well. I have not looked into that seed and what that means. So I may be uh, traveling a little ways away from spawn if I don't like the initial spawn place. But I, my intention is to stay pretty close to spawn once the world spawns, or once the world uh, is created here. Uh, we are going to use uh, default world settings. Uh, we are going to use hard difficulty. And in the interest of full disclosure, uh, I am going to enable cheats on this world. Now, uh, that is really just so that I have the ability to use commands if I need them. Uh, I don't intend to use them on a regular basis, but if a situation comes up, uh, where I might need to use a command uh, either for the sake of a video that I'm doing or um, you know some bug happens that I need to try and you know make uh, corrections for something of that nature uh, those will be the times I'll use that but not in the course of the normal um, episodes or video uh, or gameplay for that matter I, I will be using uh, a couple of uh, things from Vanilla Tweaks. I'm going to uh, use a couple of um, resource pack tweaks, uh, changing a few things. Uh, they will not be major changes, just some mostly visual and uh, things like the lower or unobtrusive, I think it's called, the one that lowers your shield view just to make the screen more... Uh, easy to see when you're holding a shield or on fire or those kinds of things. Uh, in addition to that, I do have a uh, few things that I want to add via a resource pack. I'm also getting all of those things 
from Vanilla Tweaks, and both of those I will link in the uh, description of this video, so uh, that if you decide to play along or use those uh, things as well, you're welcome to do so, and you can use exactly the same thing I'm doing, but uh, certainly up to you. All right, so uh, here we go. Thank you for joining me, and uh, let's get started. As the world loads, okay, we are in a hole. <laughs> Let's see. Looks like I've got a plains, maybe, plains biome next to a swamp and a dark oak wood forest. Yeah, I've got, looks like a lone tree up here in the, in the plains. Um, um, looks like maybe a cave down there. We'll check that out later. Uh, lots of animals around, and we've got some bees. That's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know that I want to take down that tree there with the uh, bees in it. Uh, and it's also one of those tall trees, so I don't really want to do that uh, as well. A pain to get. So let me uh, come over here to the uh, forest and get some wood from here to get started. Uh, now, while I am uh, punching down some trees here, uh, uh, I, I've recorded something uh, audio track uh, earlier, and I'm going to go ahead and play that for you. Uh, and while that is playing, um, I will uh, probably just continue to work here and do some things. I, I don't know, uh, you know, how long this is, uh, how long I'm going to be, uh, working, but I might as well just, uh, work. I may wind up actually, uh, time-lapsing, uh, some stuff, so I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, continue to, uh, harvest things and uh, get on with the beginnings of the world uh, while I play that uh, for you and then I will uh, come back and, and check in with you after after that's all uh, played through. So uh, with that in mind um, I guess I'll go ahead and get that started for you. Since this is the beginning of this Minecraft world I thought it would be appropriate to talk about other world beginnings, specifically the beginning of the real world. Now, let me start by saying that I'm neither a scientist nor a theologian, but I believe I have a reasonable handle on things. I say that so that you understand that I'm uh, searching for truth just as much as uh, anyone else, and I don't claim to have all the answers. This is just my perspective. First, I want to make one thing clear. Truth is truth. It is an absolute. Uh, there's no such thing as scientific truth and theological truth. Science and theology are both filters uh, through which we view and interpret the world. Uh, they each provide a way of seeing and understanding the world in vastly different ways. But if something is true, it will be true no matter what filter you use to interpret it. And I think the key word there is interpret. Neither science nor theology are truth. They're both simply tools to help us understand the truth and find a way to help it make sense and be meaningful to us. Second, I want to make it sh uh, clear that I am a Christian, and I believe that the Bible is true and is the inspired Word of God. What the Bible is not is a scientific document. It's also worth noting that even though it records historical events, uh, it is also not necessarily a historical 
uh, document. Uh, these things are not its purpose. Uh, it never has been and it never will be. Uh, in my opinion, most of the dichotomy between science and theology is a result of people from both sides looking for the Bible to be just that, and it's not. As an example of this dichotomy, science tells us that from the beginning of the universe, the Big Bang, to now, nearly 14 billion years have passed, with the earliest man appearing maybe 6 million years ago, and modern man maybe half a million years ago. Now, this information comes from a broad range of scientific uh, disciplines. Again, I'm not a scientist, so I may have some of these time frames off a bit. But even if I'm wrong by, say, half, it's still a mind-bogglingly different than the six days of creation mentioned in the first chapter of Dis uh, Genesis. So what's going on? Is science true and the Bible is just another religious book telling an unbelievable story of creation? Or is the Bible true and scientists are agents of the devil feeding us uh, an elaborate series of lies and hoaxes to deceive us uh, into a abandoning our faith and lead us into the pits of hell? Or maybe, just maybe, there's something else going on. As I've already uh, said, the Bible, and specifically the creation uh, story recorded in Genesis, is not a scientific uh, accounting of the creation of the earth uh, or the universe. Uh, it was given to us to help us understand some things about the nature of God and his relationship with us. There may be some of you out there uh, who aren't aware, but there are many theological theories or interpretations of the creation story. Some theologians hold adamantly to the literal interpretation of the story as a six sequential 24-hour days. Others believe that the six days of creation are actually referring to six distinct phases of creation and may cover some uh, vastly longer time frames. Still other theologians uh, believe that the six days uh, are really a literary device representing uh, indistinct time frames and, and shouldn't be necessarily even interpreted chronologically at all, but just there to illustrate the process in general. Several years ago, my pastor at the time invited me to have coffee with him and, and talk. Now, I had been struggling with some serious doubts I had, partly as a result of some of the things I've just been sharing with you. Uh, and because of the candor uh, my pastor had shown during uh, some of his sermons, I knew that he had struggled with uh, his own doubts. Uh, and so I felt uh, free to talk to him about um, some of the things that I had been uh, thinking about with regards to this. His advice to me was this. There will always be uncertainties. And this is okay. There are many things we may never have answers for. Uh, what you have to do is identify the things that are important and hold on to those things without compromise. So, what is important in the creation story? What are the things that are true and are not compromised by uh, any of the interpretations of Scripture uh, or, you know, our scientific understanding for that matter? I think the very first sentence of the Bible uh, is a good place to start. It reads, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Full stop. The creation story could stop right there and tell us so much of what we need to know. God, who created the universe, very specifically created the earth. 
It was not an accident or a byproduct. It was an intentional act of creation. The creation story does not stop there, however. It continues on to describe each stage of creation and how God first actively conceived that stage, executed it, and inspected the finished work and deemed them each good. Finally, Genesis records that God had some very specific design ideas for mankind. As recorded in Genesis 1 verse 26, Then God said, Let us make humans in our image, in our likeness. God had already made all of the other animals, but with humans, he wanted us to be a reflection of himself. These are the things that matter, the things that are universal in all the theological interpretations of the creation story. God created the universe and the earth with specific intent. He painstakingly set up the world's ecosystem to be able to support us and created us with love and purpose. While many scientists may claim uh, that it was all just a lucky accident, science does not even come close to disproving that the work of creation was done by a present and loving God. All right, and there we go. Uh, as you may have uh, seen in the course of uh, that time lapse, I was able to get some materials together and create a book and quill, which is an important part of the plans for this series. Uh, I uh, do intend to uh, create a new written book for each uh, section we do and compile a library, as the name of this series implies, the library. Uh, that is kind of the overall idea for this series. I haven't built the library yet, obviously. Uh, you have seen uh, essentially all the footage for everything I've done in this world so far. And I, I realized that the time lapse was pretty fast and furious. I hope it's not too choppy for you. I just wanted to uh, make sure that I had included everything in this beginning session. That was about an hour almost two hours worth of uh, material there that I condensed down into uh, what maybe eight minutes of, uh, of video so it was pretty fast I uh, hope it wasn't too distracting and what you're seeing here is me compiling all of that uh, the script from uh, that essay into this book here and uh, when I when I get everything entered here, I am going to call this book uh, True Beginnings. Uh, and s my intention here is to save all of the books that we create, put them in a library at some point of some sort. Uh, and if you guys are interested in uh, a world download uh, at some point in the future, I'm not going to do it anytime soon, but once I have something substantial to download, uh, you'll be able to uh, visit the library and, and see all the books that we've created. If not, I'll have them for my own reference, but at any rate, uh, I do appreciate you guys hanging out with me for a little while, uh, listening to what I have had to say there, and I would really appreciate your feedback. Uh, so if you've got any additional thoughts or any oppositional thoughts, I would be delighted to, to read them. I'd love to get your feedback. Uh, let me know what you think. I have one request, and that is please do remain respectful of any comments. Uh, if I see comments that are disrespectful, I will remove them. Uh, but, you know, if you guys have ideas or thoughts or comments, even if they are contradictory to mine, as long as you remain uh, respectful in sharing them, I am delighted to hear them. So please do that. I'd love to uh, get that uh, feedback. Kind of on a side note there, uh, you may have seen in the 
uh, course of that time lapse, I did die once to that villager patrol. I got a little cocky and was trying to dance around and see if I could get them to uh, shoot each other uh, and lost track of my own health and wound up dying. So uh, not really what I intended to do, but uh, it's what happened and you got it there in the process as well. So Anyway, guys, uh, that's going to do it for this time. Uh, you have a fantastic day, and we'll see you next time. Bye.